So what I'm going to cover in this video is the basic social features of SharePoint Online. Now, the way we get to those features to start off with is we go to our news feed. So every licensed user of Office 365 has the news feed option. You'll see that on the menu across the top. So all you need to do is select that to be taken to this area. So you will see that it looks very much like a SharePoint site. I have a menu down the left. I have some content in the middle and some additional content on the right here. So what I can do to kick things off is I can click into this area up the top here and I can share an update with everybody on my team. So I simply type the information I'm after. As you can see, I can add a photo and when I'm ready, I simply go post. So you will see that that will now appear in my news feed as something that I have just posted. Now because I posted that to everybody, if I go back across to another user here, so I'm logged in with Firefox as another user, you'll see that that appears in their news feed. Now because that was shared with everybody, obviously everybody else will see that in the news feed. So what the user can do now is I, as another user, I can go in here and um, share the update or comment on the uh, update. And again, as you see, I can add a photo, but now when I post that, that will then update uh, this option. You can see that this user can also like this update, and you'll notice that I have an ellipse here, which I can then copy a link to that conversation, follow it up, which will create me a task, or I will delete it because I'm an administrator. Now, if I go back to my uh, original user, and if I simply refresh this page, what you will see is that I now have information about that update. So this is the reply that I received from that user to my initial post here that I shared with everyone. So really it's that easy to post information. Now, a couple of the other things that um, the social feature allows me, so I can go in here and I can use the at symbol, and the at symbol is basically allows me to mention people. So I can type their name or simply uh, select from the menu that appears. Um, so I'll type in some information here and you'll see that I can also use a hashtag to help me find information. So I can add a hashtag as well. Hit OK and then I will post that. So again what we'll see specifically is that at will mention the person and I also have a hashtag. Once I mention a hashtag you'll see that I now have an additional option here to follow that hashtag. So if I now select that I will now see that item appearing in my tags down here. So again, if I refresh this page, what I'll see now is that I am now following two hashtags. If I click on that option there, you'll see that I'm following hash Office 365 and hash welcome for my SharePoint Office 365 site. Now if I go back to my uh, original uh, user here, so this is my secondary user, you'll see that I have a mention here. So if I select that, you'll see that Lewis Collins mentioned me directly. So again, you'll notice how these are also hyperlinked. You'll see that the hashtag is also available. So really, um, it's that easy to start working with the conversation in the news feed. And remember, you can simply type text into the line there. If you preface it with an at that is mentioning somebody and they will receive information about that. They'll also get an email directly and you can also use your hashtags to call out a specific item you want to highlight. So if I now quickly pop over to my Outlook, you'll see that uh, what has happened is because by default I've, the option is to receive information, so you'll see that I have an email alert indicating that someone has replied to this conversation that I have um, started here. So again, um, you by default, we'll get information in your newsfeed, but you will also get the information um, in your email as well. Now that can be configured on or off, um, as we'll see. Now what we can do here is we can follow content. So because I've had a conversation here with Robert, what I can do, you'll find, is that I'm automatically following that person. So if I click on the option here, you'll see that I am following Robert, and if I look at the people who are following me, you'll see that he is again following me. So uh, again, they're the people um, that you can follow. Now not only can you follow 
uh, people. What we can also do is we can also follow documents and we can also follow sites. So if I click on the option here for documents, you'll see that I'm actually following a specific document here. So again, I'll get information about changes and updates when that's made. I can also follow individual sites. So what I'm doing here is I'm following a number of different sites. So if I go, for example, um, to the site that I've just been working on. So when I'm at my team site that I want to follow, what I need to do is go into the top right hand corner. You'll see that I have a link here to follow. And if I click that, you'll see that I get indication that I'm now following this site. Now, if I return uh, to my news feed, what we'll find is that um, I'm now following the tutorial site. So this creates a quick link, obviously here, that I can now click on and uh, navigate to. And you'll also find that it is listed in the sites that I'm following that we mentioned before. So it allows me to move quickly and easily between those options there. Now, again, what I can also do is if I go back to the tutorial site, what I can also do is not only follow a site, but I can also follow an individual document. So again, what I can do is basically select the document and you'll see that I have the option to follow an individual document. So again, makes it nice and easy to choose the information that you wish to be kept up to date with. And again, that information will appear in your news feed once you've selected the option in there to allow you to follow that. Now, not only can we post updates directly from our newsfeed, but again, most team sites by default have what's known as a microfeed built into them. So what you'll find is the newsfeed here. So again, I can start going in and typing um, information or comments about this uh, team, team site. Again, okay, all right, so we'll post that. And then you'll see what'll happen is, again, if I go back to my newsfeed, you'll notice that um, that information also appears again in my news feed. So think of the news feed as rolling up all the micro feeds from all the team sites. So rather than having to go into each individual team site and see what the conversation is and see who's replied to each individual conversation you've started, you can do that directly in your news feed. Now one of the areas also that you get into your news feed is basically a profile area. So you click on the about me option and you'll see this is information about me. Now in the top right here I can go in and I can edit my profile. So when I select that option you'll see that I can go through and I can enter a range of information to help people uh, understand better who I am and what I'm doing. So in here I can put information about me, I can put in my contact numbers, and I can determine who or what that I wish to share that information with. So you'll notice here that I get a number of pages that I can go in. So here's my basic information. I can go in and update my contact information, my details, and again, selecting the ellipse here, I can choose things like my newsfeed settings. So here, when you select information or enter information, you can choose who has visibility to it. So again, what I can do, if I go into my newsfeed here, you'll see that I can determine what is shared and when I receive email notifications. So I can go in and I can modify these if you want. And as I mentioned before, here are the hashtags that I have chosen to follow. So again, the best thing to do is when you get started with SharePoint is to go in there and basically make sure that you update all your personal information because then that is something that SharePoint will index and make available to others, especially when they go through and run a people search. Now another thing you can do here for as an individual is you can go in and you can create your own blog site. So if I select that, you'll see now that I've created a blog site and I can now start inputting information, editing it with not only the web but some on-premise tools like Word to provide updates and information that I may wish to share with my team. A blog is a great way to share and collaborate information in an environment with a team. So again, if you have the option, strongly advise you to have a look at a blog and get into blogging so that you can share information with your team members. So again, we can get back to this simply by clicking on our news feed and this will take us back to our area. You can see what I can also do here is I can go in and I can add apps so the news feed area is very much 
a SharePoint site and as we've mentioned and other lessons have covered off how you add apps to this. You'll notice in the top right here that I also have the recycle bin if you need to go into it as well. I select the tasks. Now these tasks are rolled up from sites all through SharePoint that I have access to. So again, nice and easy to work with one location for all your tasks to be rolled into in one central location. So in summary, the news feed is the place where you can go and start a social conversation with somebody. It also rolls up information from all the conversations you have throughout SharePoint. You can also elect to follow people documents and sites and that means that, that information when it changes is put into your news feed to make it nice and easy for you to see what's going on. You can also create hashtags and follow those that allow you to capture information that others may be talking about a topic. So with that thank you very much for watching.